Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? Me? I am preparing to produce a rather large video for you right now. The video is comparing Evernote to OneNote. We are going to look at five key points uh, that I think are crucial in using both of these apps. Now, typically speaking, I do not like doing comparison videos. It's not what we do here on Dotto Tech. But there has been so much consternation over Evernote's new pricing. So many people are saying, I want to move to OneNote. Plus, people have been asking me for ages to compare the two, to compare OneNote to Evernote. So I am going to do that with you right now. We're not going to look at every single aspect of these apps. We're going to take a look at what I consider to be five key areas and five key differentiators between OneNote and Evernote today on Dottotech. All right, let's get the, a couple of things out of the way to begin with. First of all, I do know Evernote better than I know OneNote. I've been using OneNote longer than Evernote, but uh, Evernote has been my main tool for several years since I've migrated fully to the Macintosh. Now, I've always felt that OneNote is an outstanding tool, especially if you are using the Surface products from Microsoft. It works so well with the pen-based interface. But a lot of people, because OneNote is now free for all, are considering moving from Evernote. People who've used Evernote are considering moving over to OneNote, which is fine. I think that both applications are gonna serve you well, but I think we should look at them in the light of day, seeing exactly where the strengths are of each of the apps. So I've broken the uh, this demo down into five key areas. We're gonna talk about using these tools for research and retention, for capturing information. We're gonna use it for comp uh, for composition and editing, for actually creating content ourselves. We're gonna use look at the different mobility apps because uh, both of these apps, both of these tools are designed to give us access to our content wherever we are and whenever we are. And so often we are going to want to be accessing or even creating content in the mobile environment. So we'll take a look at the mobility part of the equation. We'll talk about how they organize our data and finally how they work for recalling data, for finding key information and bringing it back to us. And we're going to, I'm going to pick a winner in each area, tell you which one I like better in each area and they aren't equal in all of these areas. At the end of the day, you should have a good picture of the differences between OneNote and Evernote. Now this, as I said, is a bigger video than normal. So uh, down below in the comments area, I'm going to have links so that you can jump ahead if you just want to look at a single area because this is probably going to be, I don't know, it might be 20 minutes by the time we're all said and done. It is going to be a beast of a video, at least as far as the Dotto Tech channel is concerned. So before I talk, start talking about research and retention, I'm going to talk to you about the philosophy behind each of these applications, at least as far as I see it. OneNote is a classic notebook. It really tries to recreate the, the idea of a paper notebook that you carry around with you. Consequently, it is exceptional when we're using it with a stylus. If you're using it in the Surface, we'll be showing you later on the mobility using it with the, with the Samsung OneNote, with the Samsung Note, <laughs> OneNote, with the Samsung Note, which has a stylus. It really excels in those areas of that sort of note taking. Evernote, however, is built on search. It's designed to be a search engine beyond anything else. Once you collect information into it, its entire MO is to allow us to find that content again. So it adds extra layers of search to us, especially in tags, allowing us to create context search. And the other thing that Evernote does is it goes through all of our documents and it OCRs everything. It converts everything into searchable text. So Evernote is all about recall and search, whereas OneNote is more about the process of taking notes. At least that's my opinion on how these two different applications, uh, kind of the, the space that they occupy. By the way, if you agree with what I say, if you disagree, I'm fully on board with either one, please comment below in the, in the comments area in YouTube and let us know what you think and how you're using these tools and share your experiences. But be polite. I don't know why, but for some reason, the OneNote versus Evernote content, uh, conversation sometimes goes the way of the old Mac versus Windows where it becomes almost religion. It's not it for me. I like and use both the products. So let's keep it civil if we can. So let's begin 
our conversation right now by talking about the first thing, which is research and retention. So I use Evernote personally on a daily basis for collecting information that I'm going to be using for the different demos that I create on this channel. I'm constantly finding new ideas and I want to be able to clip those ideas. I typically find them online. I want to be able to clip those ideas and save them for future reference. So I need to have a system that will first of all capture the information from the web and then allow me to catalog that information so I can find it when I need it. And so both of these applications do serve that area through something called the Web Clipper. Now, both Microsoft, uh, so both OneNote and Evernote have a tool called the Clipper. So I've installed them both here in the browser. They're browser extensions that plug in. Here's the Evernote Clipper right here, and here's the OneNote Clipper right here. Now, typically speaking, what'll happen is I'll be reading through and I'll find a story like this one here at our friends at Social Media Examiner. Snapchat memories. Oh, that's something that I might want to do a story on in the future. So my workflow would typically say, I'm gonna, I wanna clip this and save this to Evernote so I can find it again when I want in the future. So I click on the Evernote Web Clipper, and up pops this little dialog box that allows me to select how I'm going to capture this information. Now I've got other videos that I do full demos of the Web Clipper. It's a tool that I think sets Evernote apart. But essentially what it does is allows us to either clip the, the article, and you can see that it's now stripping out some information, a simplified article, which will then just take the article itself with none of the advertising or none of the extra frames that are on the web page. It'll clip the full page, the bookmark, or it'll create a, uh, the bookmark, which just creates a URL, or it'll create a screenshot, which will allow us to then capture a graphic of the page, which allows us to then use tools that are built into Evernote to actually mark it up and to add extra, basically to annotate the graphic. Now, one thing I want you to notice as I just went through this process is how quick the Evernote Web Clipper is, how fast it resolves all of the information as we go through. Now, once I've found any information that I want to save, I then have the option to be able to choose which of my Evernote notebooks I want to save it into. Secondly, I can add a tag. Tags allow me to add context. Now, we will talk about tags in a moment as far as OneNote's concerned, and some people will tell you that OneNote has tags, just like Evernote, but the truth is OneNote does not have tags, just like Evernote. Evernote tags are user-defined. We create them here in Evernote, and we use them to define search. We use them to apply context when we do search. So, for example, with all of these, uh, with anything that I'm saving for demo, I'll choose a tag demo. Then later on, if I'm searching for, oh, it's not gonna be with this particular graphic, but if I was searching for Snapchat with the tags demo, I would find all of the different uh, articles that I've clipped that have the word Snapchat in it that, are, that, that I've identified as demo. So it allows me to narrow down my search. Over time, you're gonna have hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands of notes in your collection. So having this context-based search of tags is one of the really powerful features in Evernote. And this is an area where OneNote does fall short. The other thing I can do at this point here is I can also add a remark so that I can, so that I can talk, so that I uh, can just basically remind myself of why I happen to save this particular image or this particular page. And then I click save and it's automatically synced to my Evernote account and available to me now in Evernote regardless of where I want to use it in Evernote. That's the Evernote Web Clipper. We're gonna to return to it in a moment just for one other little feature, but that's essentially how the Evernote Web Clipper works. Now the OneNote Web Clipper is a little more simple. I'm gonna click on it here, and I'm gonna say I wanna do the exact same thing. Well, the first thing the OneNote Web Clipper does is it loads a preview. This is a place that I find OneNote kind of runs a little bit slower. You see how long it's taking to load the preview? But it's gonna tell us what it's gonna save into OneNote from this page. So in a moment here, it'll give us a preview of the page. You can see that the OneNote Web Clipper looks the same but has far less options. We can click the full page and that's what it's gonna look like if we save the full page. We can choose to save a region of the page which is very similar to the, to the graphic, uh, to, the, to the crosshair snapshot within Evernote. Or we can choose the article and it does a nice job of stripping out all of the ancillary information and just saving the basic content that's in the article of this page. It gives us the ability to choose which notebook we're gonna save it into and even which, uh, which uh, section within the notebook we're gonna save the, the document to. But that's pretty much it as far as the OneNote Web Clipper. Oh, you can add a note, 
to give yourself some context, but that's really all it does. In my mind, it's a very scaled down version of the Web Clipper. It doesn't give us any of the sophistication of the Evernote Web Clipper. And the Evernote Web Clipper sophistication goes well beyond just what we saw as far as clipping. If I'm open it up again, I want to take you into the options area here and show you one other feature. Do you see they have this related results? Now, this is for the premium versions of Evernote. And typically speaking, people are talking when they're talking about migrating across it's that they don't want to spend money on Evernote. But if you do spend money on Evernote, the related results allow this to happen. Is it then, when you're doing a Google search, at the Evernote Web Clipper, because it's installed in your browser, it will actually create a secondary search for you within your Evernote account. So here I have a little search going for online courses. This is the results from the web that we see coming up here on the web, all the context related search from the web. But here within Evernote, or sorry, within this area here within the, within the browser window, it's bringing up the results of how, what it found as far as this search criteria, online courses, how what it found in my Evernote account. So often when you're searching on the web, you've already found something related to this before yourself and saved it. And here it brings it up. So it gives you this, it gives you two areas of search. While you're searching the web, you also search, you're also searching your Evernote account. Remember what I said at the very beginning, how Evernote is really designed around search? This is a prime example of that. So when we look at these two tools as far as collecting information and retaining information, I'm going to give a big thumbs up at this point here to Evernote. I think for research and retention, because of the sophistication of the Evernote Web Clipper, that it wins in this particular, if, we, if we're considering this a shootout, it wins in this particular area. OneNote does have a Web Clipper and might well serve for you. For me, I prefer the extra power and the extra flexibility that the Evernote Web Clipper provides. That brings us to our second area, which is composition and editing. Both of these tools allow you to create fairly rich note pages, and both of them allow you to share those notebooks or pages with others, which makes it a kind of a quasi publishing platform. In fact, I use Evernote to deliver a course. Uh, I, I actually share uh, Evernote notes as the basis for delivering one of our courses. So let's take a look at how the Evernote, uh, how Evernote works as far as composition and editing goes. So this is a, actually one of the pages from one of my courses. So you can see there's a fair bit of formatting available. Basically, we're limited to a single column, but you can add uh, different fonts, you can incorporate graphics, and you'll see along the top all of your different editing options of being able to add check boxes, being able to, if you want to insert a table, you've got all of those capabilities within Evernote. Personally, I find Evernote to be a little bit cumbersome as far as editing and creating documents like this. It's a little bit, uh, sometimes it's a little bit finicky as far as how it applies different formatting to your different areas. Uh, and so it only gets a, a bare passing grade as far as I'm concerned. However, I do like using it for delivering the course content. It, it works just fine as far as that's concerned. But let's take a look at what happens in OneNote in the same area. So here's my, here's my OneNote installation. Now OneNote, as I said right at the beginning, tries to follow the metaphor of a paper notebook much more closely than Evernote, which is search-based. Consequently, you can click anywhere on this page here and you can start typing. You can start typing at any point. And all of these different, or let's just correct that, yeah. at any point, there we go. So, and you can take that little piece of text and you can move it around on your page anywhere. And this works for all of the different assets that you bring in to the page within OneNote. So if you are working on a, style, uh, on a tablet with a stylus, especially if you're on the Surface, or as I will show you a little bit later with the, with the Android uh, uh, mobile version, you can actually be illustrating on the page, you can be doing drawings, you can be annotating, and all of those become discrete elements that you can move around and you can edit independently. When you take a look here in the formatting ribbon, you can see that there's an awful lot more that we have as far as our uh, ability to create much more like word type formatting than we find within Evernote. Now, what we see here as well is I'm going to kind of take a little bit of a diversion for just a moment and talk about tagging. In Evernote, tags, as I say, are really designed around search. 
people who tell you that OneNote have tags are talking about this part of the ribbon right here, which is a series of all sorts of different tags that you can apply within your note. And what they do is they're more a visual reference of what's going on in the note than they are search based. So if you wanted to say make this here, well I've already done this with Evernote, I wanted to make it important. See I clicked on the important so it has a little star that appears to it. Now it's tagged as important, I can look for things, I can kind of search it based on that as well, but it's very limiting as far as the way that we use tags and they aren't really designed for search more they're designed as a visual cue within the note if that makes sense so tags within the both environments are nowhere near the same having said that that we're not talking about tagging right now we are talking about composition of the screen and in that particular case being able to add extra visual reference into our note is a tremendous idea. I like this idea. It allows me to it allows me to mark up these notes and make these notes a little bit more dynamic. Even more exciting is the ability to incorporate other media. Now, when I first saw this, I got very, very excited because as you know, I'm a YouTube guy. You're watching this on YouTube right now. Watch what we can do. We can go and we can copy uh, the link address from a YouTube video or any uh, Vimeo or any other online video and I can paste that in and look what happens. It resolves as a player within OneNote, meaning that we can actually watch this video play Steve Dotto, here, right how the heck are you doing the OneNote screen. This I found tremendously exciting because as you develop rich content to share with others, for example, my course content, in OneNote, I could create dynamic pages, much like a web page, complete with media resources like videos or audio embedded right in the page for you to view. Now you can embed audio in OneNote pages, but the ability to embed media from another service like, uh, like uh, YouTube in the OneNote page is a stroke of genius. Once you've composed your page, of course, then we can share our page with others. We can allow them access to edit those pages or to just view those pages. So we've got similar publishing options in both Evernote and OneNote. But at the end of the day, with this level of formatting, I'm going to give the thumbs up as far as composition and editing to Evernote. I actually prefer working in Evernote as far as composing pages. I think it's far more flexible and you can end up doing a far better job. So, so far, research and retention is one for Evernote. Composition and editing is one for OneNote. Now, let me set up some things and let us move this conversation into the world of mobility. All right, I have both of my phones set up for you to see. I have my iPhone and I have my Samsung Note uh, set up, my Note Edge set up, so that we can see OneNote and Evernote in mobility. And there is a big difference between the two platforms in the mobility space. So let's begin with the iOS space and let's start here on the iPhone. Now on the iPhone, when we launch Evernote, the Evernote app, we find a very rich and robust app. It is actually in some ways maybe a little bit complicated because it has so much functionality built in. So you can see here that I've got access to all of my different notebooks and my entire Evernote account at, through the mobile mobile interface. But for me, the biggest two features that are built in to the mobile interface within, within Evernote and iOS are first and foremost, the ability to quickly search for anything. So the fact that I just tap on the search and I can start typing in, oh, online courses and all of the different uh, notes that are relating to online courses come up to me instantly. So recalling information, which I've already stored, crucial in Evernote. If we think about the basis that I talked about at the beginning, Evernote here based on search. Now the other big thing that I tend to use Evernote for a lot is for, uh, in mobile, is for collecting information. Now you can make manual notes or make voice notes in it, which we've shown you in a lot of our different demos in the past. So as far as creating notes, all of the mobile apps are very similar between Evernote and OneNote. The difference as far as I'm concerned 
with the iOS version of and the Android version of the Evernote mobile app is how powerful the camera is within it. And actually, if we go into the settings, I'm just going to take you into the settings for a moment, into the general settings, and show you all of the different settings that are based on the camera. Because of the way the camera works, it actually has integration that with Post-it notes, with the Moleskine notebook, with business cards, where it'll scan in information from those different from those different uh, from those different sources and format it correctly for us for for Evernote. So that for me is a a huge bonus. Plus, Evernote as a document camera itself, just as a straight up document camera taking pictures of things, is an amazing kind of vacuum cleaner for information. Let me show you what happens. If we go into the camera, I'm just going to go in to, uh, I'm just going to go back to Evernote, sorry, and I'm going to just go into and open the camera. You can see that it's in document form, and here I've got a notebook, and as it finds the edges of the page, it'll actually identify the, note, the, the page and it will capture the information. So I'm gonna just choose that, take an image. Now what'll happen is, you see it's already, it's already parsed out the information, all of the extra information around the edges of the page, and it's created this note from the document that I was just working on, in this case, a notebook. Now here is, in my mind, the, one of the biggest differences between Evernote and OneNote for this sort of work. Once it's captured this information from a notebook, from a page, from a magazine page that you've taken a picture of, anywhere, Evernote will now go through this and it will OCR all of the information within this document so that later on, when we go to search for content within this document, we, it will bring up search results based on the text that you've written, either in handwritten notes or in any images or in any documents that you've scanned in. That is an incredibly powerful feature. And I think one of the big difference makers between Evernote and OneNote. They, again, it comes back to the philosophy of search. If we wanna be able to search within a document, Evernote gives us those capabilities here. So there we see the Evernote app on iOS and it works pretty much similarly in the Windows world. We can actually spend, I could spend probably 10 or 15 minutes going through all of the different features of the of the mobility apps. But I'm this demo today is about the differences between the different apps. So that's where we're that's what we're going to concentrate on and focus on. So let's now jump over into our Android world. And I have a Samsung Note, which is one of their kind of large format for, phones that's almost almost a tablet in the way that it works. But the cool thing is it does have a stylus and it's got a very efficient stylus. And I really am impressed with this particular aspect. So when I go in and I want to create, I've, I've opened OneNote here on my Android, and if I want to add uh, a note, where I, which is a handwritten note, I just tap on the pen tool there, and now you see I have the ability to be able to draw, to be able to do whatever I want, to be able to create an image, or to be, be able to make notes as I go along to highlight things that, are, that I see, erase things if I need. I've got all of the different tools that you would expect. Now you see this little badge here? This is actually something that even though I'm in OneNote right now, it would also appear when I'm in other applications. That's called the OneNote badge and that's a kind of a quick pick that allows you to instantly create a note on the fly regardless of where you are in the Android world. This idea of badging, uh, kind of most of us would have seen it first with uh, with Microsoft, or sorry, with, with uh, Facebook's Messenger. It gives you instant access to your most relevant information and in this particular case they think you can would want to make a lot of notes with OneNote, so the OneNote badge is something that you can enable. But this concept here, this ability here to be able to make notes and make notes on the fly and write gives you a peek at what I consider to be one of the strengths of OneNote in mobility is not how robust the application is. Evernote wins that hands down. Evernote's mobility app, far more sophisticated than is the OneNote mobility app. However, for this sort of capturing information, for annotation, for writing, for working with a stylus, if you're on a phone like the Samsung Note, if you're on a small tablet, if you're on a Surface tablet, if you're on any of those, in that particular case, for this style of input, OneNote wins hands down. So even though the application itself isn't as sophisticated as we find within Evernote. The fact that it's built as a notebook, the philosophy is as a notebook, it excels in this space. It excels as a notebook. So who? what does that mean? Who wins between, micro, between OneNote and Evernote as far as mobility goes? 
it depends on what on how you work if you've got an iphone i believe in that particular case evernote wins hands down if you however are in the android world or if you are in have a microsoft surface and you're carrying that around or some other tablet and you want to make notes that way in that particular case the mobility capabilities of OneNote, even though it is not as good as far as the camera is concerned in, in ocr and all those other things the ability to make notes in this way i believe OneNote wins so it's uh it's it, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder as far as the mobility equation goes I think you were hoping for a more definitive winner here, weren't you? I was too. Oh well, life continues. Next up, we need to talk about organization and how both of these applications organize our information. And here we have a profound philosophical uh, difference. If I jump over into Evernote, Evernote organizes all of your information into notebooks and you can have up to 256 notebooks. And within those notebooks, you can have, you can create stacks of notebooks where you have one notebook on top of another notebook. Uh, but basically that's the hierarchy that's available as far as organization within Evernote. Evernote doesn't rely on kind of traditional hierarchical organization in order to create structure within Evernote. You can have notebooks and stacks of notebooks and then notes only three different kind of layers of information so those of us who grew up making folders within folders to create organization with our within our computer might feel a little bit lost and we might want more organizational structure in evernote but the reason evernote does this is evernote is based on search i know plenty of people who use evernote and never bother making any notebooks at all they just keep everything in an inbox and they use evernote's very powerful tagging features in order to organize all of their information so evernote requires a kind of a new age philosophy as far as how you look at organizational structure evernote's all about finding it again based on search not visually searching through a hierarchy of information if you really like that hierarchical approach then OneNote is probably going to be a lot more satisfying for you to use because OneNote allows you to have I believe probably an infinite number of different notebooks available to you and each of those notebooks will then have uh, sections within the notebook so you can have multiple sections in the notebook and each of those sections can have multiple pages so you can create a nice hierarchical structure if you're writing a book one note is going to allow you to have chapters and and, and sections and, and volumes and create all that sort of hierarchical structure that you are used to and comfortable with as far as organization goes OneNote is for the visually inspired. Evernote is for the search inspired. So if we're going to look here, personally, I'm going to give it a tie as well because it depends on your own philosophy of how you organize information. Then we get to recall. And here, I don't even have to start going through it. You know who's going to win here. Recall Evernote wins hands down because of the speed and efficiency of search and the way that Evernote uses tags. This is one area between the fact that it that that you can create context related tags and the fact that it goes through all of your documents and it converts all of that the text within your documents into into searchable text all of the graphics excuse me within your document into searchable text this is an area that Evernote wins hands down yes you can find what you're looking for in OneNote it, it, uh, either visually by navigating through or using the search but by the time you have thousands of pages all with a you know a kind of a common phrase if you have a, let's say you do, do a lot of work on social media and you type in the term social media uh you know get coming up with thousands of responses is does not make for effective finding and recall of information evernote kicks butt as far as recall it's based on search it's built on search consequently as far as recall goes it is a big winner so what does that mean if you are using Evernote, should you migrate over into OneNote because Evernote is now limiting some of the access that you have within uh, in charging more for the service? That's a call you're going to have to make yourself. At the end of the day, I would be happy and thrilled to use either of these tools. They would both work for me exceptionally well. The key is to dive into the tool and use it properly. Make sure that you invest 
time and learning all of the different nuances of both of these applications. Personally, I'm not gonna move away from Evernote. I use it too much, I have too much invested in it as far as search goes, as far as, as, far as the content goes, but I am personally gonna start using OneNote a little bit as far as composing other, for developing my courses, for example. I see no problem and no conflict at all in developing my course content in OneNote, which is gonna be far more pleasurable as far as the composition and editing goes, and then decide how I'm gonna deliver that content downstream. It's really gonna be your choice. They're both equal contenders as far as I'm concerned, as far as viability for helping you create organization to your life. I like the fact that Evernote is now charging a reasonable dollar for because I've invested so much time and energy in Evernote, I don't want them to go away. Of course, I'm not as concerned with Microsoft because they're a massive corporation. We don't necessarily have to worry about the economic model behind OneNote. They can look at it very differently and they can afford to give it away for free for longer. But it's all about value in return. At the end of the day, have at it. Let us know what you think about the, both of these different applications in the comments below, and I hope that you found today's video to be useful. Now, there are three ways for you to stay in touch with us here on Dotto Tech. The first is please subscribe to this channel. Secondly, is subscribe to our newsletter. Then you'll hear about all of my upcoming live events, tutorials, and courses that we deliver here on Dotto Tech. And finally, Dotto Tech is a community-funded channel supported by the generosity of you folks at the crowdfunding site Patreon. If you drop by our Patreon page, take a look, you will discover the perks that are included with supporting Dotto Tech. One of those perks being access to our Evernote Made Easy course. So if you've decided Evernote is the winner in this particular battle of the notepads or the online notebooks, then I think you want to stop by our Patreon page, take a look, and perhaps Evernote Made Easy is a course that is going to work out for you. As I say, it's a perk at the 10 dollar level at Patreon. Until next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.